All right, ladies and gents, welcome. Uh, we're going to switch up the colors a little bit because there's only one person who deserves yellow. Uh, we've got a 1v1. It is happening as we speak. And for the Viper fans, it is exciting because Viper was focusing so much on Age of Empires 4. He is back to Age of Empires 2, which will be his priority from here on out. It's kind of funny because I get to, I mean, okay, listen, let's be honest. You know, I'm not the least knowledgeable person ever, but, but like I and you all watching, if you've been following Age the last month or two, you probably have more knowledge than Viper does right now as far as the, uh, as far as the civs go, right? So like I'm sitting here feeling like a god. You're sitting here feeling like a god because you understand kind of how the Gurjaras operate. Viper, I think this is maybe his third or fourth time playing them ever. When I got on my computer today, it said um, Viper got the achievement for winning with the Gurjaras today. So uh, we've had weeks. We've had time. Uh, anyways, I think the Gurjaras are amazing. I think Viper's going to figure out that this civilization is really, really good. And that's been my experience anyways. Uh, and then in the blue, uh, you're going to have to forgive me because I don't actually know if this player as, is known as uh, anything else. But this is a Vietnamese player. I think he's got another account. Uh, but again, it's tough because there's actually a lot of good Vietnamese players. I think this guy's around 2K1. So he's like maybe around top 100, maybe slightly out of that. And he said, hi, idol, which is, which is nice to see. And uh, Viper said, um, hi. So we have the Tatars for the Vietnamese player. Tatars are well-established. Tatars, they have more food on their sheep. They do more damage when fighting on top of hills. And typically a very good archer sieve. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. So, so here's what I think about the Gajaras. They can counter pretty much every single unit that comes their way. And... I think their economy, as Viper is now putting his, his sheep inside of the mill, feels much better than what the math is. So I've had conversations on this. You guys probably know the content creator, Spirit of the Law, right? Uh, and he, he made like a video that discussed like how much having your eight sheep inside of your mill, like what that equates to. And I think it's like one and a half villagers on food, right? And so that doesn't sound like a lot on paper. I have played a ton of games and watched a ton of games, and it really, really feels strong. Um, and I think, you know, you got to remember, that's in combination with also having the forge bushes. So I think, like, maybe that's the forgotten thing when we're having this type of discussion. But this civilization's economy, it feels strong. Small thing, though, you should really finish your bushes first here, Viper, because you're going to... Like, these villagers can't fit. <laughs> um... And I think they can counter everything. Yeah, so so back to what I was saying. I mean, first off, you start with a Camel Scout, which is always good against Scout Rushes. You're able to push that back a bit. Um, they, uh, in the mid-game, have the Shravamsha Rider, which is amazing against Archers. It's, they also are an amazing raiding unit. So it's a very cheap raiding unit. You can do a lot of damage with raids. You've got Camels that do 50% more bonus damage, which I think is I, I think is obscene. I'm not a big fan of like that 50% number. Just like the, the resistance damage for Sicilians. That's, that's something we can talk about later. I think it's just a balanced nightmare, to be put put it uh, kindly. But you've got that, right? And then you've got a unique unit, which is very good against infantry. And I think even very good against Skirm, too. And that's the Chakram Thrower. Um, so I forget if they're called Chakram Throwers, actually, because I always called them Disco Throwers. Anywho, here you have Viper. He's on the way to Feudal Age already. And uh, he is going to decide on what he wants to play out into. I think the weakness of the Gurjars, if you're playing up against Gurjars on Arabia, is that they're probably not going to have the wood to be able to do anything early Dark Age or mid Dark Age. Uh, and that's because they you typically make your mill right away. You can maximize from garrisoning inside the mill. And so that's where the awkwardness comes in. Yeah, any other sieve though, you're looking at this and you're seeing all these villagers have to go to a straggler tree. And you're just like, uh, what? Like, look, Viper's even going out. I think his instincts are telling him, I need to be out here taking some more food because I'm not going to have the res. But again, with, with my experience, man, you've got villagers on berries. You can just keep those villagers on straggler trees and go right into the farms and you'll be good. Let's see how good Viper's scouting is here. Okay, so this is, this is not peak Viper, right? He saw the wood. 
I don't know where in the world he's going right now, but he has not scouted the barracks or the berries. Those are like really crucial scouting things. And so this is going to be man at arms for the opponent, and it's crucial that he finds that. If you look at the scouting, in comparison, look how thorough the scouting is from his opponent. So, I mean, the scouting is just top-notch from his opponent here. Knows exactly where Viper is. Knows exactly what Viper's up to. He does not see this, unfortunately, just because it wasn't all in his vision. And Viper's even got a mill there. Oh, my word. Okay, Viper gets his wood upgrade. Now, this is where the scout's going to see this. This is where Viper could be a big trouble. Now, I don't know if click walling's like riding a bike for him. For me, if I like don't play the game for a couple days and I come back, it's just a nightmare. But that could have been an area to hit. And okay, look at the scout. The scout gets there and Viper just drops a palisade. Well, honestly, disgusting. Why do you even make military against this guy? It's not even fair. Just instant reaction. And now he can pre-wall this. Viper doesn't have the food for the scout just yet, though. And oh, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. He'll lose a vill, and he could lose another one because she can't get there. And oh, God, wait, wait, wait. It's not going to die. It, it will never die. Not, no, it'll die. It definitely will die. You know he's going to try. And oh, he got the palisades down. He actually got the palisades down. Viper down two villagers. Rusty snake. I don't know if you've ever seen a rusty snake in the wild, but you're seeing it today. I'm telling you guys, like these 2K1, these 2K2 guys, the top 100, they're not bad. Eight seconds of TC idle time as well. Some of my favorite casts over the years is when someone like Viper falls behind. He's also housed at the moment, so he forgot to make a house. I was watching him play this morning, and he said that uh, that's going to be a consistent thing for him is the housing. This is actually disaster. Is he even building one? Oh, yeah, he built it out there. Yeah, I would be loving life right now if I were blue. And I wonder if this affects his mindset. You know, like, he might actually be a little nervous. Because my experience over this year as I've been trying to compete and whatnot is I only get nervous when I think there's a chance. So what I mean is this. Like, let's say I'm up against Viper, right? I go into that like, well, whatever, I'm going to lose. But then when I start winning... That's where the nerves came in. When we were playing Gamer Legion a couple months back, and I'm up against Tato, and I'm destroying Tato, then the nerves are like, boom, 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 because I was like, oh my god, I could actually do it. And that's where that's where maybe Blue's at, at the moment. This is good work from Viper. Viper will be able to pick off this archer. Maybe mm, takes the fight. Loses his camel there. I don't know if that was entirely worth it, but he's going to go into skirms. So not only did Viper lose two villagers, Viper has now had 60 seconds of DC idle time. But I think it was a mistake from Blue to engage without fletching here. But typically, you're going to want to have that upgrade. Viper, he's going to push this back, no problem. But again, the multitasking just hasn't really been there with the town center production, I've noticed. Hello, Tristan. Love your streams. Well, hello, Tristan. Love your viewership. <laughs> okay, so... Again, he's back today, right? I was watching him play. He goes, and honestly, how dare he, by the way? This this hurts my feelings. He goes, Tristan, there's never a better time for you to play me. He's like, you will never have a chance in your life to be able to beat me apart from today. And, you know, people laughed and I kind of laughed as well, but also I was slightly offended. I mean, he's not wrong, but you don't have to say it like that. But anyways, on, upon seeing this, I kind of want to queue up, man. <laughs> a minute of TC idle time. Two villagers failed quick wall. I mean, I kind of want to queue up, but he's still making scouts. His opponent's walling up a little bit. And his opponent's making scouts as well. well I, the, I, if I'm in a casting mode, I'm in casting mode. If I'm in playing mode, I'm in playing mode. It's very hard for me to go back and forth between those, so... I'm in good spirits right now. I'm happy to be casting. I don't know if I'll do that, but uh, I will say this. I'm loving how his opponent is giving him a big challenge here. I also am hating the fact that he did not research fletching, but I think he's about to do that. Feels like if Viper continues to invest in Feudal Age, which he is, there's going to be an overchop eventually here that Blue's going to have to keep an eye on. 
I think Viper senses something's up here. I think he's sensing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely knows something's coming over here. He's like, wait a second. Because he just went back to the stable and there was no flag. And so now he's getting bloodlines on these scouts. And it's only four archers. I think Viper's going to get a clear up here. And Viper, I think, is like, okay, you can do it. He's, he's letting him think that he can come in here and get value. Viper now. Again, like the TC idle time. Like this is this is real bad, man. I don't know. I, I, I played a little bit of AOE 4 enough to know that I didn't like it. This I mean it's a big it's a big deal in AOE 2. You know, I know the micro's not as insane in AOE 4, but holy. Viper's gonna get a clear up though, and he has much better army control. He's it's 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 bothering me though. I'm gonna be honest. It's bothering me the TC idle time. I gotta like switch off the stats. That is very high number for him. As he just made some camel scouts. So guys, you can make camel scouts with the Grajaras. Again, Viper's toying with stuff, testing with stuff, trying to see what he thinks, getting a feel for it. And uh, you know, he feels like his opponent is gonna add a couple more scouts. So he says, let's add some camel scouts. But if the walls are down here, if the walls, if there's no overchop, if the walls keep the villagers protected. Blue is in an amazing position to get a win against his idol, the Viper. What's he working on? He's working on archer production, which I think is a great decision here. This is where you got to double check your wood lines. Got this scout just being chased around right now. Viper. Is there a hole? Okay. He's going to kill a vill. Oh, baby! Oh, man, how's it feel, Viper? How's it feel, bro? Oh, it doesn't feel so good, does it? Yeah, well, maybe you should think about that before you ruin other people's dreams. My God. Villager gets saved for now. 90 seconds away from the next age is our Vietnamese player. But, guys, Viper's on the way up behind this, and Viper's got amazing control. He's still got great food eco, great gold eco. Everything's looking real pretty. And another villager's out here. I don't know what's up with Blue's villagers not wanting to live. Kind of feel bad for him, to be honest. And Viper, he's going to run right through here. He's going to head right to the wood line. More quick walls are needed. And boom, boom. Well done. Viper, you have been trapped, my friend. You cannot easily engage against these archers right now. And Viper runs into the TC fire, runs into the archers. He runs away with what he's got left. Now, suddenly, this has swung, and I think Viper needs a tower here. I mean, I could be wrong, but if he sees the uptime, he might need to consider a tower. The Grajaras, they do have a unit, though, that might... Th this might be the first time Viper's actually making the Shravamshas, because earlier today, I was watching him play. He was up against a lot of archers, and he kept making Siege. And I wanted to say something to him, but he's focused. You know, I know how that goes. He's going to find out. Okay, he's going to find out how good the Shravamsha Riders are. And we've got Thumbring Crossbows. Shravamshas do not cost a lot of gold. So in the event that Viper needs to pull off of his gold, he's got enough in the bank where I think he's okay, but he's going to tower anyways. He is concerned. I thought there was maybe a world where he would be greedy. What's he going to open with here? It should be Shravamsha Riders. Okay, he's doing it. Good quick walls from Viper. This is high-level stuff. Now, if you're blue, though, you see the tower, you go right to the wood line here. And Viper has not really been able to track those archers. This could lead to some problems for Viper, but I think this Ravamsha Rider should be good enough to clear up these crossbows pretty easily. Viper will have to delete both houses, though. His reaction was fantastic there. Because he also had to react on this side with more quick walls. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this Ravamshas currently are the fastest unit in the game. Um, I, I think it's too fast. <laughs> it's so good at raiding too. This is a really strong unit. I remember my first week with the Shravamsha Riders. I was just like, nah, this unit's not going to be good. Oh no, they're good. And Blue knows it. So Blue says, I'm going to kill as many villagers as I can. And he's killed two. He's killed three. Oh, he killed four villagers. This is amazing. In total, he has now killed six villagers from the Viper of all people. Viper down to 35. And on two TCs, about to be three TCs, is the enemy with 51 villagers. But my goodness, man, Viper's coming forward with a massive army. They create fast, they move fast, they're very hard to deal with. 
And so here's where it gets tricky. What you want to make is something that's not an archer. And if you make something that's not an archer, you're probably thinking like a knight. But then the Gurjaras get camels that do extra bonus damage. So knights are not even that really that good of an option. Then if you make your own camels, I suppose that's good. But man, is this going to be messy. Oh my goodness, vipers. He is spreading his wings. Because we all know snakes have wings and he's flying right now. Has killed three villagers. TC goes up. Viper says, I'll take those sheep. Actually, Viper could send the sheep home. Viper could send the sheep to his mill. Let's go. It's the sheep heist. That's actually amazing. <laughs> and look at these Shravamshas go, man. And for blue, you've got, what, 30, 40 idle villagers? Viper took so many losses. And the Shravamsha riders with full armor, they can run underneath the town center. And the way they operate is they quote unquote dodge, okay? They dodge the initial shots, and then they're also super speedy, so they can run in and out of, in and out of any engagement they would want. For a unit that's only 75 HP and only 8 attack, which is very low compared to a lot of other units out of stables, the unit's busted, man. It's so strong. It is so strong. I'm so excited to see those sheep get into Viper's Mill. That's amazing. Well, guys, at this point, like the advantages for blue have kind of withered away. He's had over an hour of total idle time, and I'm starting to feel a little bad for him. I don't know about anyone else, but he played so well. And the GG's now called. It was a very quick one. <laughs> Viper brings it back. And that's just typical, right? Fell behind early. You know, there's a lot of... I, again, I, if I play zero video games for three days and come back to AOE 2, I always struggle the first game or two. But Viper played AOE 4, which is a completely different game for many, 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 many months. And he's looking at a new Civ here. And honestly, I think the players have gotten much better over the last six months in our scene too. So anyways, the early rust was certainly there for the snake. And then he just chose the proper unit there. Keep in mind that Tatars are one of the most terrifying uh, crossbow Civs to face up against in the game right now because they get Thumb Ring for free. And, you know, what I would say blue maybe could have done a little differently is maybe just i mean i liked what the first army did he killed a lot of villagers there but i would say maybe just go into some camels or something it's just so tricky because the second you go for three town centers you're putting most of your food income into the town center production and if you know you're thinking well maybe just idle the tcs yeah that's an option too i think instead of making the third town center on the stone maybe he could have gone for more farms you could say full wall but arabia is a very open map you could say, you know, monks, but then you're using monks to convert something that only costs 20 gold. Doesn't feel that strong. It was very well played from the Viper. And a very good game overall. I'm a little disappointed the sheep didn't make it into the mill. But I think it's safe to say, guys, that Viper's figuring out the Gurjaras. And I'm I'm happy, man. The Viper's a good friend of mine. Uh, obviously, you know, he's a legend of the game as well. Love to cast him. Love to watch him play. So I'm I'm so happy I got to sit down and cast that one. Uh, we didn't get to see the depth of the Gurjaras in that game. Maybe we'll see that in the future. There's a look at the total resources collected. As you can see, Viper had the lead there. I bet if you were to add up how much food income came in from him having sheep within mills, the, uh, the amount was probably over 500, which was the difference. So maybe that's what separated the two. But I think if the game continues there, Viper would add town centers, have a much more efficient economy. And be more than fine. 